lay by the bay. Hi, good evening. My name is Katie Evans, and I'm a proud resident of Fairhope, Alabama. My husband and I started visiting Fairhope 10 years ago and fell in love with the area. We decided that it was a perfect place to raise our three children. We made the move six years ago, and it was the best move we've ever made. I've worked for several years as a special education teacher in the Georgia public school system. Today, I'm a stay-at-home mom and a member of the Junior Auxiliary of the Eastern Shore. A big part of the reason that we fell in love with Fairhope and decided to make this our home was the downtown park experience, and that is why I'm here today. We love our downtown park, but we have become increasingly concerned about the condition and accessibility of the facility. The park is the heart of Fairhope and is such a wonderful addition to the downtown experience. Our goal is to meet the current needs of our community, especially the physically disabled and their families. They deserve the opportunity to have a facility that they can fully utilize. It seems to us that the park in its current condition falls short. Fairhope will host the Baldwin County Special Olympics <coughs> this Friday, as they do every year. While we host these exceptional young people, the fact remains that three out of every four of those children would be unable to use the park in its current state. About a year ago, we started meeting with the mayor, city workers, downtown merchants, parents, and some original playground members. We discussed that the park is not handicap accessible. The changes we propose will bring the park up to the new ADA handicap accessible law. The changes will also decrease the City of Fairhope's ever-growing budget for maintenance and repairs that an all-wood structure requires. The current maintenance for the park is between 10 and 15,000 a year. An all-inclusive playground looks like any other, except it's wider, has ramps, and some features most don't even notice. Most cities and towns are trending towards structures that are all inclusive for entire families of all ages and abilities. Currently, in our area, Thomas Hospital OT has one, the City of Mobile, Bay Minette, Dothan, Bay St. Louis, Montgomery, and Pearl, Mississippi, just to name a few. A park that has no limits would also bring in many families, which in turn generates downtown revenue. Some of the other issues that we feel need to be addressed are fencing of proper height, one access into the park that can be latched closed, and lights. We have formed a 501c3 named Play by the Bay Incorporated. The current members are myself, Carissa Cumby, and Dina Floyd, who was unable to attend tonight. We have looked into several playground companies including the one that built the original, and have contacted several local artists that would love to be involved, Chris Cumby, Lizette Normand, and Amarika Jones. We intend to preserve the integrity of the existing park and keeping it uniquely to Fairhope. We also have sent letters to those who worked so hard to create the existing playground. We would like to acknowledge those who are in support of an inclusive playground in downtown Fairhope. In addition to these 200 signatures collected at last year's Special Olympics, at this time, I would, we would like those here tonight who are in support to please stand or raise your hand. Good following. In closing, I would like to read a quote. Play is not simply a desire for children, <laughs> Play is not simply a desire for children, but an absolute necessity. Yeah. <laughs> Play is not simply a desire for children, but an absolute necessity for the development of children's language, motor, and social skills. And it is as, as important for children with disabilities as it is for children without disabilities.